All right, today we're gonna run through how to set up a pre-commit Git hook using GG Shield and the pre-commit framework. Now, detecting secrets can be quite difficult and it's very problematic when you detect them inside your Git repositories because the keys have to be rotated and considered compromised. It's best if we can detect these keys before they enter into your Git repository so remediation is much more simple. So in this video, we'll run through how we can set up a Git hook to be able to do just that. Now we're gonna be using a couple of dependencies in this. Number one, we're gonna be using the pre-commit framework, and we're also gonna be using ggshield, the open sourced uh, tool from Git Guardian. Now, the reason why we're doing this through the pre-commit framework is because this is actually quite powerful and we can create layered Git hooks. This means that we can perform multiple actions in a single Git hook. So if you want to add in actions to detect other vulnerabilities or code quality, or even if you have large files, then we can still do this in the same Git hook using the pre-commit framework. And we'll run through that in a minute. Now, the other area is that we're using ggshield and this relies on the Git Garden secrets detection engine. You can detect over 300 specific different types of secrets, but does rely on an API to be able to do this, so we need an API key. So let's get stuck in and set up these elements first. So on my terminal, I'm just gonna install the pre-commit framework and also ggshield. So pip3 install pre-commit. pip3 install ggshield. Of course, I'm using pip, but you can use uh, brew or docker or however you are comfortable installing packages onto your machine. And now we need to get an API key. So we can head over to gitguardian.com or go directly to dashboard.gitguardian.com. It's free and very simple to create an account if you don't have one already. And we're gonna head down on the left to the API tab section here. and select create new API key. So I'm gonna create one here. We only need the scan scope. We don't need to worry about the incident scopes. This is for added functionality that we'll go through in different videos. Create new API, and there we have it. We have our API key right there. So we're gonna copy this. Now we need to have this installed as an environment variable. So however you load in your environment variables, we can do this here. Uh, I'm just gonna use the export command and we're gonna use the, the value git guardian underscore API underscore key as a variable and we are done. We have set up uh, ggshield, a pre-commit framehook and added in our API key. So we're now ready to create our first pre-commit git hook. So to do this, I'm gonna use the instructions on the ggshield GitHub page. So if we open that up, we can see that there's actually a lot of functionality that ggshield can be used for, but we're only interested in pre-commit hooks. Click on that and we head down here. And we can see that we're running through the pre-commit frame framework. We've already installed our pre-commit. So now we're on to the next step, which is to create our pre-commit uh, pre config YAML file. So let's do this. Okay, so we have a YAML file here and this is where we're gonna describe what we want our pre-commit hook to do. So this here is the code that we need to put into our YAML file to be able to, to add secret detection into this. But as I said, we can add in different functionality in a layered manner into this YAML file and create a, a multi-tiered or multi-layered GitHub uh, Git hook. So let's open back up our YAML file and we can paste this in. Now I'm gonna make one small revision to this code. On line three, we have red main, rev main. Now this is just saying that we want the latest version of the main branch, but this can actually create some errors because uh, doing this is actually considered a, a bit of a, a security concern. So depending on your setup, you may get some errors. So I'm actually gonna put in the specific version that we're using. So at the moment, it's 10.7, 1.10.7. 
So that's the current version of GG Shield, and we can see this at the top uh, of the GitHub page here under releases. Okay, we're gonna save this file here. Now, as you can see, this has been added into our repository that I'm working on. This is just an example Python project. Uh, there's nothing too special about it, but we've added our YAML file directly into that repository. And now we need to build our Git hook. So we're gonna run the command pre-commit, install. And this is going to install our git hook based off our yaml file so we can see that it's installed at dot git hooks pre-commit and then we can actually go in and see that so we can go into git hooks and then we see our pre-commit file right here so this is a binary file that was what runs when uh, we do a commit in that hook so that's what it actually looks like and that's where it's installed so now we have actually installed our first pre-commit git hook. So we can check to see if this runs as expected. So let's do that now. So as I said, we have these files here and I have one file within here called config.py and in here I have an AWS key. So this is kind of typical to what maybe you would find in a config file. So let's add this in. Okay, and now let's commit this. Now immediately once we do the commit, it's going to scan these. We have already have a failed under the GG shield. So if you have multiple uh, commit actions, uh, hook actions in here, they'll, they'll list which ones have passed, which ones have failed. And we can see that it's detected an AWS key and it's given us the key details uh, with some of the details blurred out. So here it has worked as we have expected and we've successfully installed our first pre-commit git hook. Now we can add some more functionality around this to help us use this in a more natural way that I'm going to run through. So the first thing I want to run through is how to ignore these uh, secrets that come through. So let's say that in this scenario, this is actually not a true secret. This may be an example secret, uh, perhaps it's a test uh, or dummy credential, uh, or maybe just a general false positive. So we want to ignore this, but we also don't want this to keep bothering us into the future. So one of the great things about GG Shield is it gives us an ignore SHA. This is a SHA value of this secret and it enables us to store the secrets that we want to ignore without duplicating or cloning the actual secret. So I can run the command GG Shield ignore last found. And we get a note to say one secret has been added into our .gitguardian YAML file. So it's created this file, it's right here, .gitguardian.yaml. And if we open this up, we can see that this is our SHA value of our secret. So nowhere does it actually present our secret values. So we can include this into our repository and we can share this without worrying about exposing the secret. So a cool little feature in there. So because it blocked my last commit, well, now that I've uh, made the changes and added the .gitguardian ignore file, I should be able to commit this without being blocked again by the git hook. So let's try it. So I'm going to run the same uh, commit command. And now this time it's passed because we're ignored, ignoring that secret. So let's run through another scenario where we might want to ignore uh, certain secrets. I have a folder in here called examples. Now we often see that uh, perhaps we might have example secrets in sold uh, inside a folder. Maybe it's uh, showing how to set something up. It can be quite common. So in this case, I'm going to want to ignore all of the files that are in that folder. So let's first add this. And now let's commit this and see what happens. 
All right, we've found a lot of secrets in here. We have an RSA key. We have an Alibaba cloud key. We have a Bitbucket key. And so these are in different files as well. So we don't want to have to go through and ignore these. Perhaps we have multiple of these types of secrets. So what we can do is we can open back up our Git Guardian YAML file. And on line 11, you'll see paths ignore. So this is similar to secrets, but instead of ignoring secrets, we're ignoring certain file paths. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in a file path for examples. So star star, file name, star star. We're gonna save that. We're gonna try and commit these secrets in again and see if we get blocked by our commit hook. All right, it's passed. We've been able to commit those secrets into our repository. I do want to stress that in this scenario, these are dummy secrets under no circumstances, even if it's private, would you want to commit secrets into your repository? So please don't. And then I'm just gonna show you one other uh, small little functionality here. And that is that if we want to ignore a specific file. So perhaps you have example secrets in your readme, perhaps you have a example config file uh, that you want to have that has dummy secrets in that just show how to set up your project. So we're gonna do that here. I have a file in here called examplesetup.py. So let's add this in. Let's commit this to make sure that, yes, we do have secrets in here. And again, we've been blocked this time with Grafana token, Okta token, and a Paystack token. So. Uh, a number of different keys in here again. So now we're going to use the file pass again, but this time we're just gonna ignore one particular file. So we're gonna run the command star star, and then the file name, which is example-setup.py. Oh, that's meant to be a slash. We're gonna save this, and then we're gonna try and run this again and see if it bypasses it. Which obviously it has because by now uh, we should be used to that. So there you have it. That's some of the main functionality behind using a GG Shield in a pre-commit fashion. Now you can also set up GG Shield in lots of different ways. In your CI CD pipelines, you can scan Docker images right after you publish them. You can scan your directories or Git repositories, all using GG Shield without leaving your command line. And you can also install it into your software development lifecycle in multiple different places. So we're gonna keep creating new videos to show how we can use this tool. And so please subscribe. Uh, to get notifications of those future videos and give us a thumbs up if you like the tool, like the video, or reach out to me in the comments or on Twitter. My handle is at AdvocateMac and ask me any questions that you may have about our tools. Thanks.